Hello, this is Bill Webb, AKA Bill Indiana. Today I'm gonna to do an unboxing of Rurik Don of Kiev by Stanislav Kordonsky. I think that's how you say his name, and Peacekeeper Games. Uh, this is part of a recent Kickstarter that I backed, and so it's the Kickstarter version of the Dawn of Kiev game. So I'm gonna open up the box, show you what's inside, and then talk a little bit about the overall Stone and Blade Kickstarter that I backed. Let's get it to the table. Huh. So this is the Dawn of Kiev box, the Kickstarter version, and I ordered the Stone and Blade Kickstarter, or back the Stone and Blade Kickstarter for Rurik that uh, came out this fall, and I ordered the Fast Prince, <laughs> and so I got the original game Fast, and we'll get the um, other game later uh, in next spring, I believe. And so I wanted to show you what comes in this Kickstarter version. Now, I think the box actually just has the main game, but the extra Kickstarter advantages or the extra Kickstarter additions that came are these player trays and I don't know how to play the game and I haven't I've watched a couple videos but I haven't actually played it yet it's still in the box uh, but uh, these are the trays I think for the different player pieces and then I think these are just storage trays for players and there's four of each and then um, these are intrigue cards that came in the Kickstarter version that aren't a part of the regular retail version so these are the extra things I think you can see I'll show you the cards under the camera later when we look at some of the pieces close up uh, but I think you can see the trays well enough just to see that they're just plastic. I was a little disappointed in the in the quality. It's definitely a thinner plastic, not like game trays, but um, still it'll be a nice organizer. Um, and I don't really know how they work yet because I don't know how the game works, so maybe that's all that you really need. So I'll slide these off to the side for now. And let's go ahead and dig into the box. This game by Peacekeeper Games is one that I've heard a lot of people talking about. It didn't get a lot of love or attention initially, but um, I think with this Stone and Blade Kickstarter, I've heard a lot more people bringing it up and talking about how it actually was one of their favorite games of the prior year. And so, um, and just the look of the game and uh, the few videos that I've watched and playthroughs, uh, it seems like the kind of game that I'll really enjoy. Uh, resource management, area control, uh, worker placement, some uh, little bit of bidding in the action of who's going to choose which action. So like I said, I haven't played it yet, so I don't know too much about it, but um, what I've seen looks like a game I'll enjoy. And it's just gorgeous in terms of the type of game I like. Uh, so it says, the land of Kievan Rus is in turmoil following the death of Vladimir the Great in 1015. The people need a capable ruler to inspire and lead them. As one of Vladimir's children, you are embroiled in a fierce power struggle to win the hearts of the people and rule as the next Grand Prince or Princess of Kiev. Rurik Don of Kiev is a medieval realm-building game featuring action programming, a brand new mechanism, resource management, and area control. Play as one of eight historical figures with a unique ability. The, player value, the people value a ruler who leads well in a variety of endeavors. Establish your legacy by building, taxing, fighting, and accomplishing great deeds. Plan and resolve actions according to how you place advisors in the central strategy board. Higher numbered advisors earn greater benefits, but lower numbered advisors resolve their actions sooner. One to four players, 30 minutes per player, ages 13 and up, and then all the different components listed here as well. All right. And I believe the creator of the game, uh, Stanislav Kordansky, I hope I'm saying that close to right, I believe he has a, a new game that's just coming out, uh, maybe Endless Winter, I think that might be the one. And uh, it also looks gorgeous. I'm, I'm tempted on whether I should back that one as well. Um, the art in these games, I don't think he's necessarily the artist, but the art in these games is amazing. And I've heard so many good things about this, and people are raving about Endless Winter. I believe that's the one um, makes me curious. So I'm hoping to try this a few times, and that'll maybe convince me whether I should go for Endless Winter or not. All right, inside, okay, we see actually some storage containers here with different pieces. I don't know what all the different components are yet, because like I said, I haven't played the game. Um, but there's different resources here. It looks like fish, maybe stone and wood, animals and honey, looks like. Uh, these look like maybe upgraded components, so I'm not sure, but those look nice. And then we've got some miniatures here and some bases for the stands. And then we've got our player yellow, blue, 
white and purple to the player meeples for the four possible um, players. And then we've got the blue and red and yellow with the white. So we've got our, I guess it's a reddish purple. So same with the miniatures. We can put some of these under the close up camera in a little bit, show you what they look like. Don't know if I'll be keeping this or not. We'll have to see how it goes in with the other storage containers and how that all fits together. All right, storage guide. Oh, that's nice. A um, few games starting to come out with this. Yeah, okay. Now it's showing how to use those, so that'll be good. Um, put that all back together according to that. And then here is the rule book. Really pretty. Nice and large. Most of all the components. Explanation of who all the leaders are. Game setup. Lots of pictures. I like it when they use a lot of pictures. This is a little more text heavy here, but still, here's the overview of the gameplay. Claim phase, end of game, solo mode. I'll probably be trying solo mode first so I can learn how and then introduce some other family members. All right, deed card reference. Very nice. Here's the game board, and all of the art is really amazing. It's a style that I enjoy. A very vibrant and yet not too busy. Um, you know, and with the sort of landscape to it, just almost map look to it. I really enjoy that kind of view or kind of style. So nice big board, but not overwhelmingly large. Feels sturdy. These must be the player boards here. These are nice and nice and thick. Oh, they each have different tops here and dual sided. This one has uh, like a castle view, and then this one's like at sunset maybe, or sunrise. A little bit of a different like countryside view here. And then looks like some kind of maybe fortress or something there. And then yeah, all double-sided, so I have to figure out what all the different sides mean. And here I think is that, uh, oh, actually I'm not sure. I thought this might be where we bid, but I don't think so. I think this is another sideboard for some other feature of the game. I think here is the bidding board. Oh, it's also in another tray. Nice. So, and then here are the different tiles. Okay, so I think these look like these uh, look like the replacements for these because I see wood, um, I see stone and fish. So these nice upgraded components will replace those. So that's good. And then here are the coins. And with the stone and blade coins, I did add on the, or I think at the level I got it includes the metal coins and the honey cubes. So um, that'll be an upgrade that comes with the second round. And then here are some cards. I have to open those up and see what they're about. And then here we've got, looks like some stickers for some of the features, some of the components. And then some different kinds of cards. We'll put some of these cards under the close-up camera take a look. But I do like this. This is a nice organizational system. And then this is, like I said, I think the bidding board. And now down to the miniatures. And it has even a nice little cover that snaps in here. It snaps in pretty firm, too. <laughs> All right. So we'll take a look at these miniatures and put them under the camera. Um, looks like there's some additional ones here. I don't know if that's for a different expansion to the game or if that's part of the solo mode or what. So and I'll take a quick peek through the rule book and then we'll put some of these things under the close-up camera to let you see them a little bit more clearly. All right, here is a close-up of some of the different pieces. We can see we've got the advisors in the blue. Um, there's Each player gets six advisors and it looks like we've uh, got two with the number two on it. And then there are different claim markers um, so there's three per player. It looks like this one may have been broken. Um, and then we've got the church and the market and the stronghold. So these are the markets and these are the churches and these are the strongholds. And then we've got wood and we've got ore, fish, we've got honey, fur pelts. And this is the first player marker. And then these are the um, miniatures for the troops. So I've got some laying down. Unfortunately, it looks like some of these are going to need to be re-glued as well. Looks like they've broken off. Uh, so it must have been a little bit of a bumpy ride in the shipment for a few of these pieces. Um, we'll open up the other colors and hopefully they'll have not suffered so much wear for their travels. Uh, but these are some of the items that you find for this before the blue player. So here are the rebel miniatures in black. 
And apparently that sticker sheet that I showed before when I was unboxing, you put a sticker on the bottom of each one of those before gameplay. So that's what the stickers are for. And then there is the round marker, this crown. And then I showed you before the first player marker. There it is again, the bear. And then we've got our different leaders. This is Agatha. She has the bird. And then Boris with the sword. Then we have Maria with the bow and arrow. Then we've got Mstislav with his dog. I'm probably butchering these names, but. Then we've got Predslava, the simplest one of them in terms of appearance. Really cool shield color or uh, decorations there. Sudislav, his dagger. Sviatopolk with his hatchet, <laughs> his axe, and then Yaroslav. I think maybe some sort of wizard or something with a staff there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. So those are the miniatures that I hadn't shown you yet. All right, here are the cards that come with the game. These are the scheme cards. There are 27 of these, so you can see the back here. And then on the other side, I don't know exactly the role of these scheme cards, but it looks like it's showing you a bunch of different items and potentially maybe how you trade them or use them, or you, um, yeah, maybe they go into your hand. I don't really know, so I'm gonna have to figure that out, but those are the scheme cards. There are 26 deed cards, and so the back of the deed card looks like you've got some sort of quill and parchment there. And then these are different, looks like actions maybe, and things that you can do. Enforce, Horde, Market Day, New Beginning, Established Fortress, Great Library, Capital City, Splendid Feast. So lots of different deeds, things you must be doing, I'm assuming. And then we've got agenda cards, just 11 of these. It's got a crown and a book there on the card back. And then dignified, successful, prosperous, regal, committed, conquering, capable, courageous, protective, esteemed, and wealthy. And then we've got the round summary card, just the player guides for the players to learn and remember what the different steps are for each round and some of the main actions and structures and what their functions are in the game. Then these are the leader cards, and on the back it's got a full picture of the leader. Really beautiful art on these. Well, beautiful art everywhere. <laughs> and this dog here, I can see him here. I don't know what this card is yet, but apparently goes with this leader. So you can see the different leaders for the game. And then on the other side it tells you who the leader is, and it looks like maybe uh, some part of their power or ability. Really gorgeous art here. And then we've got, these are the solo mode cards. So really pretty on the backs of them with the bear. <laughs> and then the other side, uh, I've seen in one of the videos how you kind of cover the card up and you reveal a kind of layer by layer to order out when you're playing solo. So these are the solo mode cards. And then these are the intrigue cards that came um, as part of the Kickstarter special, or Kickstarter edition. This looks like the, the dog of one of those leaders. Leica, sight hounds hunt by sight and speed rather than by scent. So um, got that. I think that's not one of the intrigue cards. This says intrigue and talks about the at the start of each round, except round one, the leftmost intrigue card activates. And then this just gives some more information about how you use the intrigue cards. And I think these are the actual intrigue cards because they all have the same back. And then on the other side, it tells you what some of those intrigues might be. Mercenaries, caravan, nomads, corruption, secret meeting, desertion, truce, drought, worker sh shortage, famine, and heresy. So that is mainly what you see in the box. I'll come back up top and show you a little bit about how it all fits into the box. So there you have it. Those are all the components of Rurik Dawn of Kiev, the Kickstarter edition. 
I'm going to show you the storage solution here now as I put things away. So all the tarot style cards, the leader cards, the solo cards, uh, all those different cards go here. All the smaller cards, there's two places here for both the Intrigue and the other cards that are that smaller size. We've got the uh, cardboard parts of the tokens, and then uh, these other tokens, I think, are for the resources that somehow go with um, defeating the recruits or the rebels or something like that. The rebels go here, first player marker and round marker, and then we've got our miniature leaders here. And then this just snaps into place on top to seal all of that in. Then on top of that, you put this first board in. It fits right in snug. And then this goes on top of that. And then we put these smaller boards here. Too tall there. And then we put the main game board in, which pretty much fills up the box. And then the guide and the rule book. And then we put the four troops in. And uh, the way they fit together, I'll show you if I can get one of these apart, uh, the lit or the base actually is where you put all of your pieces, the buildings and your representatives, your advisors. And then the lid is actually whoops, the lid is actually where you store all of your troops and other pieces. So those go right in there like that, into the corners. And then this with all of the more realistic resources and the coins goes in the middle. And there you have it. So that is Rurik Dawn of Kiev, the Kickstarter version of our Peacekeeper games. Hopefully that was helpful for you to see what comes in the box and to maybe see how the Kickstarter version differs from the retail version. If it was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you click on the like button down below, and it'd be great if you'd subscribe to the channel. If you've played Rurik or you sponsored the first Kickstarter or the Stone of Lake Kickstarter, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you haven't played it yet, let me know what you're looking forward to. Um, and if you want to get notifications of future videos that I put out, click on that bell icon. As always, thanks for watching. This is Bill Indiana, signing off. Uh -huh.